We're on the trail of survivors, descendants of a band of castaways who landed on Madagascar and evolved into more than 30 different lemur species living today. By doing so, they unknowingly averted disaster because monkeys, smarter and more aggressive, evolved on mainland Africa and outcompeted all the lemurs living there, driving them to extinction. So we're searching the island sanctuary of Madagascar for the descendants of the ancestral lemur. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes, on their turf, by their rules. Be the creature. I hope we're still off the African coast. How much longer can we float in the Indian Ocean here in this raft? <laughs> but this is exactly where the ancestral lemur was. Tired, wet, sun-baked, hungry. Here in the Mozambique Channel, about 60 million years ago, a handful of early primates clung to a natural raft of vegetation and floated 240 miles from the African continent to the island of Madagascar. They must have looked something like a small mouse-sized creature with hands and big eyes. We call them proto-lemur. A group of them were probably set on their journey in a violent storm, clinging to a tree or some kind of vegetation. They were swept into a river and out to sea, only surviving because they were small, could store fat in their tails, go into a torpor-like state, and it's a good thing they lasted. Ugh. Because when they finally landed, they reached a place that had so many diverse habitats just waiting to be colonized. And over many, many millions of years, evolved into over 30 different species of lemur that are alive today. That's right, 30 different species. Because a lemur is not just a lemur, but who are they all? We're here to see just how far that early proto-lemur has come as we race across Madagascar to meet today's endangered lemurs. Proto-lemur arrives somewhere on the west coast, and we begin our journey in the southern region in the spiny desert of Madagascar. The spiny desert of Madagascar. Finally, we're here. And it is spiny. Spines are low. Spines are high. They're everywhere here. And you have to be especially adapted to survive these spines. Hey, a radiated tortoise. The shell, a tortoise's armor against the spines. Now that is highly evolved protection. But our big question was, what did the lemurs do to survive? How could any lemur land on these spiny dideracea? I don't think I'll believe it until I see it for myself. Talk about an evolutionary leap. It took millions of years for proto-lemurs to turn into this long-limbed tree-jumping specialist. Here they come, Chris. Get ready. I'm rolling. Whoa! Yes. That was incredible. <laughs> I still can't believe it. What a jump. 12 feet. One to the other, full weight on these spines. The eye-hand coordination or eye-finger coordination of these guys to be able to place their fingers right between the spines. Interlacing fingers in spines, going at full jump, full speed through the air, that's amazing. That is, ow. Maybe they know exactly where they're jumping. Maybe they have paths through the spiny forest, landing points here, there, that they know that they travel through their territory. I think they do. Lots of animals use well-worn paths mm -hmm. when they go from one place to the other, like deer paths. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find some ring-tailed lemur paths. OK, I'll you... stick with these guys. All right, yeah. cool. And then probably with these two species, diurnal, in this area, Maybe we'll meet up again in All a couple right. weeks. <laughs> <See you sooner>. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about these two different descendants of proto-lemur that makes it possible for these species, the safakas and ringtails, to survive in the very same forest? 
Martin was off to find the ringtails, and I was sticking with the Safakas. They're bouncing over to a completely new habitat. The gallery forest. A rich, riparian forest springing up from the desert along the edge of a river. Once, most of Madagascar was covered by forest. 80% of this has now been destroyed. Incredible leaping ability. That's what Safaka lemurs are known for. He's going low. It's incredibly rare to see this species on the ground. Whoa, another one up high. Wow. All right, the giant kua. What a call. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. The alarm call. We're getting close. We're right under them. I joined up with one of the most terrestrial of all the lemurs, the ring-tailed lemur. Such good leapers. Look at that. Fantastic leapers. And it's a big group, too. Looks like there's between 25 to 30 of us. The largest group of any lemur species is made up of ringtail lemurs. And the ringtail lemurs are a very different offshoot of the proto-lemur, the only species in their very own genus. Look at that tail. That is the sure giveaway that you're looking at a ringtail lemur. Ringtails are the only lemurs that have stripes on their tails. Why do they have such conspicuous tails? It's all about the social nature of these lemurs. They live in huge groups. Those striped tails are great banners advertising, here I am, there you are. They can see each other, keep together, and if that's not enough, they have that contact call. That <coughs> I wonder if Chris is hearing this. <laughs> ah. This vertical clinging and leaping is impossible for a human to do. And the main reason is because of our feet. Safakas have specialized feet that are more like hands and can grip the trunk of the tree allowing a secure anchor from which to spring with those frog-like legs. Whenever I try to spring, my feet slip. And I can't get that traction that'll propel me from one trunk to the next trunk. Okay, on this tree I have an anchor, which sort of simulates the Sapaka's ability to grab with their feet. And now, Clinging and leaping is so much easier, but I still have one problem. The arm and leg strength in proportion to their body size is incredible for these primates. Their grip is amazing too. With just a grip of their foot or hand, they can hang from one hand. Now this is so tiring for me, but they can do it for a long, long time. It's unbelievable. One thing Safakas love to do is play. They're like two ping pong balls chasing each other through the trees. Hey, can I get on this? These young Safakas are curious. Hey, buddy, whoa. <laughs> here I am, over here. Ah, Martin would love this. Okay, playtime, ringtail lemur style.
It's this windy weather, nice and cool. And it brings out the frisky spunk in these lemurs. They're up like this, boxing at each other, and then racing around the trees. Even a tail crab. <laughs> They get so excited, these males, when they play. They grab their tails and sit there and rub the scent from their wrist glands on their tails. Now, this is play now, but it's a precursor to the stink fight, which is a ritualized way males do battle during the mating season. First, they spread their scent all over their tails. They do a handstand, and the tail goes over the head, and they throw the stink at the other one, intimidating him, trying to get him to back off. That is uniquely ringtail lemur. And smell is more important to lemurs than any other primate. See, in a dry forest like this that has some openings, especially when the area has been disturbed by humans, being able to come to the ground is really important in this part of Madagascar. Chris is lucky, though. Sometimes the safaka come to the ground. Are you guys heading down? Whoa. On the ground, we are in for some spectacular leaping. <laughs> this was something I'd always dreamed of seeing. The tree specialist was hitting the ground. Wait for me. Leaping lemurs, look at these guys go. <laughs> but why the funny hop? Now, if you're built for vertical cleaning and leaping, this is how you have to move on the ground. It's just the way their body functions. Into the tree for a safety break, look for predators, then off again. They spread their arms for balance and use those leaping legs Kind of like this. They cross over one another. They leap really high, body upright, and sideways to the direction you're traveling. Arms out for balance. Sometimes crossing in frog-like leaps. But it really takes the wind out of you. So Safakas have to take a break every now and then, especially those mothers with babies. The early morning safakas love to sit in the sun and soak up the rays. Hey, here come a few more. This young safaka is about three months old. He's still riding on his mom's back, but by six months of age, he'll be fully mobile. That's a safaka contact call. There's another call this Shafaka makes that gives them their name. It's the alarm call. And it goes, Shafaka, Shafaka. There, she's doing it right now. Shafaka. See those deep wrinkles on her face? This mother's old. Safakas are mature at four and will usually have a baby every year after that. Only 50% of the babies survive their first year. And some of those can live to be more than 20 years old sharing the years and the forest with many other creatures. A spiny chameleon. One of 57 chameleons found in Madagascar. And that is about half of all the chameleons in the world. Hey, keep your eyes peeled for Chris and the Safakas. They've got to be around here somewhere. Hey, but steer clear of those ringtails. They've been known to eat you guys. There you go. Got it? Now, what are you doing in the cactus? I can't believe they choose a cactus, though, to sit in. And some of the lemurs are even eating cactus. Now, how you do that, I don't know. They take off huge bites of it. It's pretty fleshy stuff, but you do have to watch out for spines. take off chunks. So the ringtails were taking advantage of cactus, but what were the safakas surviving? Flowers. Hmm. 
It's like eating a cotton ball. <laughs> leaves, that's a favorite. Sophagas live in small groups of about four to 12, and like many lemurs, females are the dominant ones of the group. If a female wanted to eat where this male is eating right now, she'd come in and chase him away. He's into some good fruit up there. Ah, oh, some Renaria gravia fruits. First, they bite the whole berry off, and then chew it up in their cheek. And spit out the seed. Safakas and ringtails both devour these fruits, but it's the food they don't share that allows them to coexist. Eating on the ground, the big difference between the ringtail and other lemurs. It looks like this is a creature with two heads. One big head, and there's a little identical head right on top. Riding jockey style, that's a way to travel, isn't it? Oh, here's an underslung baby. Look, riding on the mother's belly. That's how they ride when they're really young. So right there are the two ways that the parents carry their infants. Because they need their hands free to climb, feed, and move with the group. Even the mom with the baby can really move on the ground. Wow. Look at them go. Ringtail lemurs can bust out into a full-on gallop. They can really stretch it out, completely comfortable on the ground. Up, we're on the move. Martin and I were following our individual troops as they followed the food sources, much as proto-lemur and its descendants have been following theirs for millions of years. You can't miss us. Ringtails. And Martin, he found them. Martin, he found the ringtails. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Aren't they great? They're a huge group, almost 25. They're great. So they meet. The two lemurs meet. I think we have a great fix on these two. I mean, sofakas are vertical clingers and leapers and feed in trees. Ringtails, quadrupedal runners and jumpers, feed in trees and on the ground too. Sofakas come to the ground only to cross open spaces. Ringtails are great on the ground, quick like a fox. Two very different lemurs radiating from a common proto-lemur ancestor, but different enough to coexist in the same habitat. We've gotten to know the safakas and the ringtails. But since proto-lemur's progeny didn't just stay in one place, neither can we. It's time to move north on the trail of the evolving Madagascan lemurs. OK, on down. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Oh, this way? For millions of years, this was lemur country. People only arrived less than 2,000 years ago. But in that short time, a third of all lemur species have gone extinct. We want to see why. All right, salam akumi. I mean, bizotu betiga. We'd reached the end of two paths taken by the ancestral proto-lemur, but there were so many more to discover. Our expedition continues as we head north. The range of environments here in Madagascar is incredible. From beaches, desert, high plateaus, it's all here. Proto-lemurs descendants spread across the island, evolving quickly, but now can't adapt to the exploding human population. We're brushing up on our Malagasy because it's really fun to be able to speak to the local people in their language. Chris, uh, what is the word for big? Uh, lehebe. Nice. Uh. <laughs> What's you like? Uh, you like is tianao. Oh, right. Okay. So it's like tianao maki. I like lemurs. We were now driving through disturbed forest where lemurs are increasingly hard to find. The black and white rough lemur, once common up and down the east coast, is now rare. Today it's heavily hunted for food, so it's a double whammy. 
hunted towards extinction while its habitat shrinks. And it's a unique lemur line, the only large lemur who leaves their young in nests. Oh, this is some fire. Oh, wow. Fires are the leading cause of lemur habitat destruction. Look at these flames. It doesn't matter if fires are set for slash and burn agriculture or for creating charcoal. Once the forest burns, the soil is bare. The next rain washes the topsoil away so the forest can never regrow. It becomes a barren grassland. Imagine if you were a lemur in the path of these flames. You're leaping through the trees, leaping for your life and abandoning your home. Chris, we gotta get the truck out of here. The flames are too hot. This was once a rainforest filled with lemurs. And now it's been turned into this massive rice paddy. And they were huge trees that they burned or felled, dug up the roots, moved all this earth. It's amazing. Probably never realized that the lemurs were going to become extinct because of it. Nice fig. We've got to get to a place where lemurs aren't threatened, up into the few areas of cloud forest where lemur habitat is still relatively pristine. A different place, different foods, different adaptations required here. A place for new lemurs to evolve. Our goal here is to find and get to know some very secretive species of lemur. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Simpuna. This is a type of Propithecus lemur, the only one with red eyes. A very close relative of the dry forest safaka. The same body design, but obviously different coloration and a lot of different adaptations that allow this Simpuna to live in a completely different environment. Look at this. Right in here, can you see him? Look at these fruits he's eating. Chris, they look like big olives. These simpuna are seed predators. They actually kill the seeds by eating them. Yeah, and the dry forest safaka eat the fruit and spit out the seeds. Martin, I'm gonna go up and get some of those seeds. All right, I'll spot you down here. Whoa, look out! Oh, let me, hang on, I'll get one. Got one. All right. <laughs> This is what the lemur's doing. It's dripping off this inedible outer coating, which is meant to protect the seed. So the lemur gets rid of that. That's a nice seed. It almost looks nut-like. <laughs> that is not edible for me. It's soaked with a nasty latex. <laughs> lemurs, like these simpuna, they eat what's available in the forest. Different weeks of the year, they're eating different things. And that's why having a pristine forest is so important. If any trees disappear, that might be the critical tree that provided the fruit that got them through a certain month. The terrain was getting rougher here. And these rainforests contain a little creature that was getting pretty rough on us. Ah, oh, massive blood stain. Another leech got me. They lay in wait on the forest floor and the trees everywhere. Little squirmy, heat-seeking missiles. And when they sense out a warm body, they stretch out to latch on. And if they get a hold, they quickly move up your leg to find the soft spots, latch on, and start sucking your blood. We've only got one leech-free zone out here, our tents. You always have to try to get your tent set up before it rains, and it's hard to do. The lemurs are out there. We want to go out and find them, but we have to get set up. That sky could open up any minute, and if your tent's not set up before the rain comes, you're going to have a wet expedition. There are at least 12 species of lemur in this forest alone, but there is one extremely rare group that is only found here. We're in search of bamboo lemurs, three types. They're all living in this forest, feeding on bamboo at the same time of day. Lemurs. Where, where? Yeah. Gray bamboo lemur there, the size of a squirrel. Hard to keep up with. Martin, come on, he's up here. This terrain is tough. And it's so much easier for them to move through here because they can go from branch to branch, tree to tree. But for us, slipping and sliding on the loose leaves of the mud, 
These lemurs are giving us a run for it. The gray is the smallest bamboo lemur. And also the quietest. This species is one result of adaptation to the once plentiful bamboo resources. He eats parts of both bamboo species in this forest, the giant bamboo and the viney bamboo. It's a much more manageable size for these small squirrel-sized lemurs. And here's the technique. With the back teeth, and do the corn on the cob motion. And then with their little hands, break, twist, and that's the stuff they're looking for. I'm really itching right now here. Do you see anything? I think it might be when I ate that bamboo. They have these hairs on the new shoots that protect. Looks like you're a clown or something <laughs> with an extended <laughs> smile. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> One bamboo lemur down, two more out there somewhere. Uh, the golden bamboo lemur, way up there with the bamboo leaves. This lemur was a surprise and recent addition to science's evolutionary tree, only discovered in 1986. This is a new bamboo shoot filled with protein but protected by cyanide, and only the golden bamboo lemur can eat it. This part of the bamboo has such high levels of cyanide that it can kill a rat in a matter of minutes. But the golden bamboo lemur is a cyanide specialist. They can eat this getting past the bamboo's defense to the great protein inside this fresh young shoot. And only they can eat it, so it gives them a great competitive advantage. It separates them from the other bamboo lemurs, allowing three species to live in the same forest. So that was the golden bamboo lemur, a medium-sized primate known to science for less than 20 years. But there is also a third bamboo relative, once thought to be extinct, but then rediscovered. And that's who we're after next. In secret places, pockets like these off the beaten track, that's where the surviving greater bamboo lemurs hid out until they were rediscovered only very recently. Whoa. Unbelievable. Wow, can't pass this up. It's a Madagascar shower! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! And there were so many frogs living here at this waterfall. They were colored perfectly to match the rocks and algae. A species perfectly adapted to this microhabitat, surviving in a world of their own. Check it out, a Malagasy crayfish. It's huge, and this one's a female. You can see her eggs right underneath her tail. They're bright orange. We gotta get her back in the water so she can oxygenate those eggs. Madagascar is full of hidden pockets of animal life. Looking for lemurs, they're the biggest and furriest creature out here, but they share this forest with so many other life forms. The reptiles. The amphibians. The insects. This cloud forest just pulses with life. So many chameleon species devouring so many insect species. There are unbelievable numbers of endemic birds. The nest of a paradise flycatcher. And there's a little pink egg inside. Let's back off and see if the parents will come back. All right, it's him, the father bird. Back to warm that egg. They take turns. It's a beautiful bird. So what other surprises can we meet in here? Hopefully, we'll be able to find the one bamboo lemur that everybody thought was extinct until a small group of survivors was found hidden deep in the bamboo forest. Hey, here's a sign that we must be in the right area. Only one type of lemur can get into these tough bamboo stalks. The greater bamboo lemur. He must be in the area somewhere. All right. Lots of bamboo means lots of bamboo lemurs. But it's tough to get through. Right there. Oh, great. All right, this is it. We can't miss it. This could be our only chance. 
Okay, go for it. I can't miss it. He's going to shoot. He's just moving over a little bit. Let's follow him. Okay, here he is. Got him. Hello, Greater Bamboo Lemur. He's a third surviving offshoot of the Bamboo Lemur stalk with a very unique ability. Here's the greater bamboo lemurs specialization in action. They bust through the stalk, get it inside to the woody pith, peel it off in layers, and just munch it up. Even in the mature stalks, look at him dig into it. And pull it, pull it. He's using a lot of his body weight. He's digging into it so hard that the whole stalk is shaking. So what exactly does it take to eat this bamboo? Wow. Now this stuff is pretty tough. We can't even get a strip with our teeth. You gotta use your knife to cut into it. You can see how strong it's it is. bamboo, but it's like wood. Wow, that's tough stuff. I can't even get it after you've made the cut. Let me you gotta try cut it down again. There okay, we go. there we go. And then, can, yes, oh, then okay. you can strip. If you get into the, the grain, across the grain, you can pull the grain down. Amazing. Oh, yeah. But this is the hard stuff. The amazing ability to get through this stuff and get to the food inside is what sets the greater bamboo lemur apart from all other lemurs. So many species have gone extinct. We'll never have the chance to see. This is one reprieve. This is one lost animal that's been found. <laughs> Hear that? They don't make a lot of sounds, but most of the sound they've made so far is when they're telling another lemur not to come too close because they've got this bamboo to themselves. Whoa, this mom's really talking. Chris, the baby's right here. Oh, yeah. See how trusting she is? She's bringing her baby right in. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear what he's talking about? Wow. That two-week-old youngster is already showing white ear tufts, the trademark of the greater bamboo lemur. Without this specific species of giant bamboo in stands large enough to support a good population of these lemurs, greater bamboo lemurs would simply not exist. Hey, buddy, do you know how special you are? Now you're going to be on TV. I'm going to make you look so good, because you're going to be a star. You're a bamboo-eating star. Sunset in the cloud forest on the 12th day of our expedition. We'd slept through the day to get ready to investigate the nocturnal creatures. At dusk, we were ready to go. For weeks, we've been focused on the lemurs, but Madagascar has carnivores too, civet species whose ancestors arrived around 20 million years ago, perhaps in the same way as the proto-lemurs. That's Galidia, a smooth, quick little Bavarian, very mongoose-like. That's a cool orange color. He was caught in a kind of snare. I don't know how we got out of that one. But they are intelligent. And good enough tree climbers to go after small lemurs. A close cousin, Fanaluca, is more terrestrial and nervous. They like to eat frogs, insects, geckos, whatever they can find in the leaf litter. Fanalucas are nocturnal, and this one's getting an early start. The darker the night gets, the bolder Fanaluca becomes. Fanaluca is still out foraging for food. Worm. Got it, slurp. Ooh, she got a moth. See that? Fat tail on the Fanaluca, that stores fat for times when food is scarce. 
And the Viverid ancestors got to Madagascar the same way as proto-lemur, on a raft, storing fat in the tail, slowing their metabolism, surviving the journey. To this day, the lemurs that most closely resemble proto-lemur store fat in their tail, like the dwarf lemur. Its overall body shape and size is very similar to what the proto-lemur must have looked like. Or it could have been a little smaller, like the smallest of all living lemurs, the mouse lemur. It's unknown which of these two small nocturnal lemurs the proto-lemur most closely resembled. But one thing is for sure, as a group, they haven't strayed far from the original proto-lemur. Ah, a nocturnal lemur. The smallest primate in the world, the mouse lemur. This mouse lemur, one of the closest living look-alike to the proto-lemur that came here. Little hands, big eyes, able to survive in a lot of different places because she could eat anything. Tree sap and gum, insects, small reptiles, all could have been a part of a proto-lemur's diet. And with the ability as a generalist to eat all these things, this little proto-lemur could have spread all over Madagascar into all the different habitats and then evolved into the specialized lemurs that we know today, including the eight we've seen so far but there were at least 22 more species to see, and our time was running out. As our search continued, it took us right through the heart of a Malagasy village, and it reminded us of how the booming Malagasy population is bad news for lemurs. The more people there are, the more forests are cut, and the more lemur habitat keeps on shrinking. But these are really nice people living in one of the poorest countries in the world. It's illegal to hunt lemurs, but where food resources are very scarce, lemurs provide a ready supply of meat for local villagers. But some lemurs are revered and never eaten. We stocked up on some provisions. Chris, you have that bag? I found the bari. Okay. Here, you need the bag? Yeah. Okay. So All right, right. now we are ready to get back into the forest and find the largest living lemur, about the size of these kids. Aisha. <laughs> Babukutu? In foray? Oui. Just right. wait till you hear this lemur's call. It is incredible. Gotta get some more words. I know. Friends, 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 friends. Veluma Sakaiza. Veluma Sakaiza. We saved the biggest for last. We're heading north again, back up into some new hills and a new area of cloud forest. Now we're looking for the largest lemurs. All the action happens in the morning, so we have to find them fast. There are two big species out here somewhere, one silent and strikingly beautiful, and one among the loudest mammals on the planet. Okay, you just left off. Come along here. Psst, Martin. We're right underneath them. I don't believe it. The diadem savaka. Evolving from the same pint-sized proto-lemur, the diadem has outsized all other savakas to be the largest living today. This lemur is definitely a contender for one of the most beautiful lemurs in Madagascar and one of the most beautiful primates in the world. Oh, oh, that infant there, she's the future of this species because there are less than 10,000 diademed lemurs left and they're being hit hard by hunting. That sound, that's not these guys. You hear that, Chris? Up ahead, I hear something. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, this way. <laughs> Another lemur shares his forest with diadem. It's big, loud, the injury. It's not gonna last long. We gotta go, let's fly. Let's go. The injury we're seeing, we had to get to them before last call. By the time we reached them, the injury was silent. So now we just had to wait until they started calling again. Or better yet, find them before they called. <laughs> this way. The injury. 
a lemur about as long as a six-year-old human. Somewhere along the evolutionary road, the injury pretty much lost its long tail. Only a stub remains. I love their black hands and feet. It's almost like they're wearing scuba gloves and booties. <laughs> <laughs> the injury lives in family groups with a mother, father, and all their offspring. Offspring usually stay with the group until they're about seven years old. This group has at least one older offspring and one young offspring who's leaping on her own already. Oh, wow. The baby is leaping, but she's so high up there. Look. Oh, yeah. I don't think <laughs> she's fantastic. It's amazing that we're seeing a baby injury. Because they're the largest lemurs, they also have the most time before they are sexually mature, ready to produce offspring. So to see a baby of this endangered species is phenomenal. Grooming. Grooming with the lower foreign size are shaped as an actual comb. This is unique to lemurs. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I can't see the actual teeth making up the comb. I just, I just can't get the angle. Oh, there was the little one to call me mom. Now it's mom's turn. The injury only make that haunting, eerie call a few times a day. So we have to stick with it, be patient, and above all, be ready. These trees are hard to shoot through, so we've got to stick with them. Moody. There they go. Calling. You see that? Right through there. Perfect. Help me. It's cool. Just help me. It's not over here. I can hear it. Oh, they just moved. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was. I think we got a good view here. That is the call of the injury. I can hear it, but I can't see your face. Her face is always blocked. I can't believe this. That sound can be heard for miles away, and it's the way for Indri to announce its claim to this part of the forest. This is this group's territory, and they're letting everybody else know that. Hear the neighbors? They're answering. Yeah, now I see your face, but you stop calling. It's really tough getting a picture of these guys making that amazing sound. This forest is so dense, and uh, we just got to find that right hole and show you that. They moved just a little, and the window's gone. Let's go. Let's keep up with them. This is tough in here. The repositioning, getting comfortable. At least they shake the trees so we can know which way they're going. I think I saw the mom and baby head this way. Us. Okay. Here they are. With those super long limbs, long fingers, and toes, the Indri can reach almost any leaf in the forest. Look at those greenish eyes. They're amazing when they stare at you. It looks like they're staring right inside you. They've pulled up into that sleeping position of the injury, and they won't go rest for a while. If we were lucky, we'd have one more chance. Maybe they'd do one more chorus. Our only hope was to stay with them and be ready. Martin, wake up. They're calling. Her mouth is so red. She holds it so wide open. It's amazing. The baby's just hanging the back. Nice <laughs> way. Oh, wow. They usually do this call for about two to two and a half minutes. This is eerie. It's so loud, it just goes right through you. It's... And then the bird. 
don't know if you noticed, but there's the tooth comb right there. Those four lower incisors modified into what is a built-in comb. Yes! We got it. That was tough to get. Oh, wow. Running through here and getting it just at the right view. We got it. The culture of the Malagasy people developed with lemurs all around them. And lemurs are a part of their beliefs and their customs. Some lemurs, like the Babakuta, the Indri, are good lemurs. They're revered. The inner story, they saved people in a forest. And so now it's fadi or taboo to kill them. We've been so lucky to get such a great idea of what it's like to be 11 of the more than 30 existing lemur species. All the lemurs we've seen evolved without human influence, but now humans are the key to their future. Will we get a chance to complete this journey with future expeditions and see all the living lemurs? From the tiniest mouse lemur to the largest injury. It's astounding that from such a humble beginning, so many bizarre and beautiful lemurs have sprung to life on this island called Madagascar. Virtually all are threatened. And beyond the very important first step of knowing who they are and how they live, action has to be taken by us, their fellow primates, to make sure lemurs keep leaping and singing and just being lemurs for millions of years to come.